Remnant children of God, maturing into teenagers and uh, mature adults in God. That's what is happening with, with uh, the chosen, the elect, if we allow it to. Um, to be able to trust and believe in God, that is the ultimate goal. And you want to be able to do that more and more every day. I'll give you a tip. Go ahead and write down, start writing down from, from this moment. Get a pen and paper out. You can pause the video so that you don't forget and start writing backwards all the things that you feel like God has done for you. Start with dinner or lunch or breakfast and continue to go back because a lot of people didn't get a chance to eat today and they won't get a chance to eat until the end of the week. Start with did you get a chance to sleep in a nice soft bed? A lot of people only get a couple of hours sleep a day, if that. And then they have to they have to work the rest of the time. Did he save your life? How many times? When did he do it? So many things that he's done for you. You you have the faith. We have the faith. You have the trust already. But we forget. So sometimes we have to remind ourselves. We have to um, go backwards and look at the past in order to see what God will do for us in the future. And speaking of the future, it's 2020 now. There's a lot of interesting things that are going to be happening this decade. Really read your word. Really praise and worship God. You'll get a lot more from praising and worshiping God than you'll get from anything else. Pray. Teach your, ch teach your children how to pray. Read, worship, and praise the Lord. This is Revelations 11. And this, this is an exciting uh, revelation that it, to me. It, it, it excites me because I know I'm going to be a part of this. You know, the, the chosen, the elect, the remnant will be a part of this. They're being, we're being trained right now. And uh, if you're still listening to this, um, then you probably are. Uh, one of the remnant chosen for the end times because this, these are the last days these are the end times and it may take another decade maybe a little longer after that even the, the, the climate change people say the world will be, will, uh, be over with in uh, 2022 so they know something the doomsday clock is set at 90 seconds to midnight now that's a minute and a half it's never been that close before and that's a doomsday clock that's the scientists and that's a very accurate clock. It's been set back before, but it's never been set forward this much. Midnight is when it's over with, and that's that'll be a new beginning. So um, there's, there's obvious signs in the world, too, if you're paying attention. But the two witnesses, that's what this is about. A lot of people forget that they will be here, and they will be set up in Israel. And they'll be set up right there in Jerusalem, and they'll be alive. Are you going to be a part of the, our, the Moses company or the Elijah company? Because that's who they are, Moses and Elijah. They're coming back, and they will be, they will be at uh, the temple in Jerusalem for three and a half years, day and night. No sleep, no, nap, no naps, and they will be speaking the language of God. That is tongues, and um, there will be a cloud of witness on earth, witnesses on earth at that time. There will be immense power of God on the earth at that time because of those two coming at that time. And the elect and the chosen will get a chance to do a lot of miracles and things that we thought that we'd never be able to do before. Seven times greater than the Lord when he was here on earth, and you know what he did. Fed people, healed people, and so on. So it says there was a, a great reed like unto a rod uh, and the angel stood saying rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and then and, and them that worship therein but the court which is without the temple leave it out and measure it not for it is given unto the Gentiles in the holy city uh, they shall tread, a, tread underfoot 42 months so he's talking about the two uh, witnesses here. 42 months, that's three and a half years. There's 36 months in a year, and there's six months in a, in, in a, in, in a half a year. 
uh, 36 plus 6 is 42. Three and a half years. And we will give power unto my two witnesses. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth. Now, anybody that's clothed in sackcloth, that's like mourning. That's like the end. That's like the worst situation. Sackcloth and ashes. It's not a good thing. So, but it's good for if you're saved. But if you're not saved, it's not going to be good. But unfortunately, a lot of people will be getting saved when they do uh, arrive. So, these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the uh, the God of the earth. And if a man be hurt, if a man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and desire and devoureth uh, their uh, enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must uh, in this manner be killed. So if anybody tries to hurt the two witnesses, they're they're gonna be they're gonna be like fire breathing dragons. All the witness has to do is open his mouth, fire comes out, he'll be singed, he'll be burnt to death. And anybody that tries to touch them or go near them. So you can forget the armies and it won't, it won't matter if you try to drop a nuclear bomb on. Nothing's going to happen to those two witnesses. Those are God's kids. Um, those, are, those are our uh, leaders. So These have power to shed heaven and that it rain not. That's a lot of power. There, there may be some droughts going on here. You know, you really wouldn't want to piss off God at this point, or piss off the two two witnesses at this point. If they if they can shut down, if they can if they can stop the rain, I mean, a lot of people are going to be thirsty. Crops won't be watered, but that's not going to be all over the world here. I don't know who it, and where this is going to happen, but there's going to be a lot of angry people uh, he, uh, that that hate the two witnesses, and um, I wouldn't want to be one of them. You know, I wouldn't want to start lash out or say, I wouldn't want to say anything bad about them uh, while they're here, definitely while they're here on earth. They might hear you. I don't care how many thousands of miles away that you are. And the power over waters that turn them to blood. Well, that's a lot of power to turn, um, turn a man's water into blood. And they Kind of like uh, in the Ten Commandments when Moses stuck his rod into the water and it turned into blood. And they were swimming in the pool and the pool, even, even the, the containers in the houses that were filled with water, turned. To, they would try to get a drink and then they'd see it was all red and stuff. So, And they smote, smote the earth with plague, all plagues. Oh, it looks, sounds like it's going to be a lot of sicknesses going on at that time. Make sure you're covered in the blood of Jesus Christ so that you don't get sick. I wouldn't be afraid of this if you're a Christian. It's just, this is how God does things. And he loves us all. But, you know, the day of the Lord, God is great, and he's also terrible, too. So, uh, that's his love. And I really don't understand his love uh, much. But, um, but that, 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 that's who he is. He is love. It's not something he does. It's something. It's the, it's it's who he is. And when when they shall have finished uh, their testimony, um, uh, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them. So that'll be the Antichrist um, coming out of the bottomless pit and shall. Um, overcome them and kill them and that'll be after three and a half years now this is written and it's supposed to happen so it's okay and their dead bodies shall be in the street of the of, of the great city which spiritually is called Sodom of Egypt where also the Lord was crucified so these men Moses and Elijah will be laying in the street for three and a half days okay the same spot where the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified. How about that? And they, of all, of all, of the people, and uh, kindreds, and tongues and nations, shall see 
their dead bodies three and a half uh, days and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be um, in, put in graves. So they're just going to leave, the bodies will just lay in the street for three and a half. Nobody will be able to touch them. You can't move them. They'll just be there. You'll get a chance to see it on Angel TV. Uh, Seduce, uh, you got the largest Christian network in the world. Um, it'll be on TV. It'll be broadcasted 24 hours a day. So, and that's Angel TV. Um, and, um, and they shall dwell upon the earth and shall rejoice over them and make, um, make merry and shall send gifts to one another because these two prophets um, tormented them that dwelt on the earth. So there'll be some tormenting going on. And a lot of people are going to be happy that the two prophets are dead. you got to be pretty happy if you're going to be acting like it's Christmas and giving gifts out and stuff like that. Because um, they're going to think that they actually won, which they didn't. Because these aren't ordinary men. <laughs> these are these are um, definitely not. They're, they're, they're part of the uh, 24 elders that sit um, in heaven. They make the decisions for the entire earth. And if you remember, no one knows where Moses' grave is. And Elijah, he just walked into, he just was, uh, what do they call it, translated right into heaven. So, they're still alive anyway. So, at least their bodies are in their spirits. So, they still have, they actually still have their own bodies. So, that's what will be laying in the street. Because if they were just spirits, you don't see spirits laying around in anywhere. The spirits, will, they never die. So, their bodies will be laying in the street because they're still alive right now they're in heaven or paradise but uh, they have their bodies and after three days after after three days and a half the spirit of, of life um, entered into them the spirit of life of God entered in them and then they, they stood on their feet and uh, great fear fell, fell upon them which saw them. So they lay in the streets for three days. And then God, entered, God, God gives them life again. And they stand up. So they're dead and they're, after three days, you know, the body's going to start to stink and rot. It doesn't take very long, maggots. And then they just stand up. Of course, they're going to be—they're not going to look like anything happened to them, because that's not how God works. They're not going to look like zombies or anything like that. But this—this this is going to—we're going to be a part of this. You see, unless you pass away of natural causes or, you know, or or something, you probably a lot of people are going to be here when this happens, because this is going to be happening here within the next, you know, I, I believe it's going to be happening in the next 10 years. Like all the signs are there, and I've, 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 I have teachers that are prophets of God, and they walk with God. They see him physically. They talk with him. They take, the Lord takes them places. They do missions for him. I mean, they got a relationship with God like, like I have with my, better than I have with my wife, you know? I mean, they see him that much. They see the Lord that much. So they know what's going to happen. They don't give specific times and dates. But they give hints about about the future. They don't know the future either. So this is just a guess to me. But I think I'm pretty close. The one world government is already set up, is ready to go. Catholic society set up, ready to go. One World Religion, it'll be finalized on um, May the 14th of 2020, it, 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 probably at the Vatican, because that's where, that's where the uh, false prophet is, uh, is uh, setting it up at right now. I, don't, uh, I believe that the Antichrist is alive right now. He's just waiting for his opportunity to jump on the scene. He's being groomed for that right now. So everything's already set up. He's just waiting for the United Nations to, uh, to, to implement it. And um, and that so the Lord says uh, here in uh, number twelve, come up here. And they ascended to heaven in a cloud. That's going to be cool to see. In that same hour, there was a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. 
So there's going to be a great earthquake in Jerusalem. If you live there, um, get ready for it because it, when the two uh, when the two prophets are ascended into heaven, there's going to be a big one. So it's it's going to be a one tenth of, and the city fell, and the earthquake were slain them seven thousand. So, seven. God likes that number seven. So, at that seven thousand people will die in that earthquake, and uh, remain uh, were um, frightened. The people that are it's going to scare everybody, and um, including the the remnant also too. So, these are th this is what's going to be happening here um, in the last days, end times. It's not going to be a hundred years from now. It's not going to be fifty years from now. We're close. Because it's all, everything's all set up. We're having a grace period now. Enjoy it. But you but trust and believe in God. you got to get your faith built up. So you don't make the wrong decisions. When the mark of the beast, which is already set up also too. They're just waiting for God to say it's okay to implement it. Don't take it. It's, it's signing your, your, your name in blood to the Antichrist, to the devil. And once you, If you do that, there is no... There's no uh, way out of it unless you cut your hand off because I guess they're going to put a chip in your hand or something or give you a tattoo. And you don't want to be cutting your body parts off. It might hurt a little bit. And I don't know what the medical is going to be like. Then if you if That is if you change your mind. But don't do it. And you can't let, let your kids do it. You're going to have to really trust God for your food, your water, you know, Christian community, you know, and believe in him. And you may have to, you know, be on the run. Because any everybody who gets the chip, they'll be out to get you. Yeah, if they know that you don't have the chip, they're they're it's it's going to be their duty to report you to uh, to the authorities, and the authorities they will come get you. I mean, Big Brother, they got cameras everywhere, and if you got a cell phone, you probably won't be able to use it because they can track you with a cell phone. They'll track you down, and then you'll be found, and you may even be martyred. At this time, so get you. That's why trusting and believe, believing in God is very important at this point, because if you're to be martyred, you can, you cannot deny Jesus, because that's going to be our final test, the mark of the beast. That's the last one. If you pass that one, you made it. Just if you can say no, I love Jesus Christ. I will never deny Him. You've made it. So get that in your heart. Get that in your mind. If you know nothing else, know that and teach that to your kids. Two, to, to, no matter what, never deny Jesus Christ and do not get the mark of the beast. Besides, they got they got cyanide in each one of them um, chips anyway. They've got people lined up around the block in Sweden and Switzerland to get those things now, and they have them in their hands. They don't know what they even have in their hands. There's cyanide in those things. If you decide to defect and go to the other side, and, and, and I don't know how you could do that, or if you decide to go against, you know, the one world um, rule, and they find out, they'll push, push a button, and that sign out, that, that, that chip will crack. You'll be dead in less than a minute. So, you, basically, you become a slave when you get that. And they pro, they, they'll re, reprogram you if you get the mark because they have the chip inside of you. you. Just like you can program your computer or just program your cell phone, they can do the same with you. It goes right to your brain. You can't refuse it. You become one with the chip. Chip grows into you, becomes a part of your body, and you can't remove it. You, get, you won't be able to dig it out. It becomes just part of your muscles and your bones and all that. And you become one with that chip. So you'll be like an android. So go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you like. And give a thumbs up so other people around the world can see it, uh, the video. And we're going to do a declaration now. And it's, it's um, I have I don't have it printed out, so I can't let you guys see it. But it's down in the description area if you want to follow along. This is a really good prayer, and um, very powerful prayer. So you can say this with your families. You can do declaration, say this prayer with your families, and you can see some life changes happen. Just pressing in and believe in God, and just you got to start trusting Him more and more and more every day. That's that's the goal. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about it. And um, and this is, this is a cleansing prayer. So, um, ready? Mm -hmm. 
Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, all things concerning myself, my spouse, my children, my job, my business, my city, my state, my country, my household, and my church, I pray that you stop, nullify, blind, deafen, confuse, shut down, break the power, and conquer Satan, Lucifer, all witchcraft, sorcery, the prince of the power of the air, every generational curse, and every unclean spirit that I have not mentioned. Father, mute, muzzle, gag, and cut off all communication between devils. Close every demonic portal and gateway and seal it. Confuse them all. Thwart all of their efforts. Lord Jesus, render every demon powerless in my life from now on. In Christ Jesus' name. Send them to the feet of Jesus for judgment. Matthew 18, 18 states that verily I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The word of God is quick and more powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Hebrews 4, 12. Father, in Jesus' name, kill and cut off the head of every serpent and every giant. With the two-edged sword, the sword of the Spirit, and the word of God, Lord Jesus Christ, Every negative, unclean spirit that operates inside of my eyes, my nose, my mouth, my ears, my skin, inside of my head, my emotions, my body, my mind, my thoughts, my spirit, my soul, and my personal life, both internally and externally, Father, I ask that you divide all of their power, divide their camps, divide their agreements, divide their kingdoms, Pull down every stronghold in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, Father that no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. Isaiah 54, 17. Thank you, Lord, that you will thrust out the enemy from before me and shall say, destroy them. Deuteronomy 33, 27. Thank you, Jesus, that my enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and that I have tread upon their high places. Deuteronomy 33, 29. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Holy Bible states in Philippians 2, 10 through 11, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And now with the authority of the blood of Jesus Christ, I command every unclean spirit to now bow down and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your dominion, power, and authority to do these things. Father, in Jesus' name, I bind, chain, cage, every work of darkness, and put them into the supernatural cages at the feet of Jesus Christ. Father, enable the warrior angels to arrest every fear and every unclean spirit, and cast them all down into the pit along with every other devil involved that I don't know about. In Jesus' name, no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. 2 Timothy 1.7 I exercise the law of Psalms 91.7 A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come near thee. There shall no, no backlash, no blowback, no reprisal, and no retaliation because of this my prayer. The, the enemy and thank and that uh, the uh, thank, you, thank you father, father for, for giving me the power to tread upon serpents, serpents and scorpions and all over the powers of, of the enemy and that, that nothing shall be by any means hurt me Luke, in the mighty name Luke 10 19 in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Father, I thank you that I am raised up together with you, and I sit together with you in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus, Ephesians 2, 6. Father, I pray that you will continue to lead and guide me in every moment of my life. Please give me a heart to believe and a mind to, to receive, and that my eyes may be enlightened according to the works of your mighty power. You have not given me the spirit of fear, but of love and a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1.7 Please forgive me of every sin that I have ever committed. 
Thank you for your passion and for dying on the cross for me. I thank you, Father, and give you all the praise, honor, and glory forever and ever. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. So subscribe to the channel if you like and um, give a thumbs up so other people around the world can get this information. And Father, we also pray for all the homeless and the hungry and people that are sick, Lord Jesus Christ, people that need fresh water, that you give everybody exactly what they need today, Lord, and show your face to them. Let, them. let them know that you love them very, 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 very much. And save every soul on this in this world, Lord Jesus Christ. Save everyone and keep them all once they're saved. In the, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen.